Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred On. Here we are with another episode, but for the first time in a long time of Tottenham Transfer Talk. Because of course it's December, the middle of December, January coming up, and surely we've got to dip our toes into that transfer market. Uh, I've got a new football journalist with me this time. I've got Greg Stobart. Greg, how are you? I'm very good, thank you, Barnaby. Thanks uh, for having me. Are Spurs going to spend some money this January? Well, they want to, and I think we all know they need to. They need to sign a striker. There's too much pressure on Harry Kane. They've got a short list. They're going to try. The problem always is, who can you get in January that's not going to be ridiculously expensive and their clubs are going to be willing to sell them. And that brings us very nicely to my first port call. This first part will be about transfer ins and then we'll do a second part about potential sales. But first up, we've got the very hard to pronounce Mishi Batshuayi from Marseille. Did I do okay with that? You did all right. And Tell us a little bit about him. He's the perfect player for Tottenham, I think. Um, strong, quick, he scored goals. They've been looking at him since he was at Standard Liège in Belgium. The problem is, Marseille don't want to sell, and I'm not sure he's particularly keen to leave. He wants to start for Belgium in the Euros next summer. Mm -hmm. So how do you say, come and sit on the bench behind Harry Kane or not play as much? And of course, if he plays well for the rest of the season, it's not just going to be Tottenham in for him. It's going to be Chelsea, it's going to be Arsenal, maybe even Man United, so and that's it, a problem. Is it worth saying that from Paul Mitchell and Daniel Levy's point of view, January might be might be our only chance again if we wave around the right amount of, of and, cash. And it's the same with all the players they want as top targets. Why they messed up in the summer really with Berahino. You look at the play Batshawi, Mbolo, Berahino, Inaki Martinez, that's the kind of profile they want, but they're all very, very difficult to get in January. And I wouldn't be surprised if they spend all January trying to sign Batshawi because his stats are perfect as well, perfect profile. And then what's going to happen is end of January, we're going to be scrambling around right. for Charlie Austin or someone yeah. like that. But they've got to get someone in. Um, and it's the, play, it's the trade off, really. You either, they, want, they have to qualify for the Champions League or mm -hmm. they want to. So you've got to get someone in. But the, the players they really want, I'm not sure, are going to be available. It's interesting, isn't it? Because um, more recently, uh, we've started getting players who haven't really been in the rumour mills of the papers. So, for instance, when Hung Min Son came in, that was kind of out of nowhere. Uh, is it possible, do you think, that some left field purchases who we haven't really heard about uh, in the kind of rumour parts of the papers could, could come? Is that a Paul Mitchell thing that he's working behind the scenes? Yeah, there's definitely, they've plugged a few leaks at White Hart Lane over the last couple of years and you're right, there could be, you know, Deli Ali almost came from yeah. nowhere really, he's yeah. very hyped up. They've got, he's got his black box, or oh, actually I'm not sure that exists, but a little black got, box yeah, slash black yeah. book. But you know, they're very detailed, they're scouting properly, they're doing it properly, they've still got the transfer committee and whatever you think about that, it means that decisions are made as a team mm -hmm. and they will have been discussing a lot of targets and a couple of those names I mentioned like Mbolo for example. So he's a, he plays for Basel, right? Yeah, very good, they were looking at him in the summer, like Juventus have been linked with him, Dortmund, Wolfsburg in Germany. He's the next big thing, and we all know we know with Tottenham, they're not going to be able to buy the ready-made product. Right, sure. You buy Gareth Bale or Luka Modric before they yeah. become good enough to Absolutely. play for Real Madrid, and then Bolo's that kind of player. So well, if they can sweep for someone like him, and then, and I don't know. You let us know if you agree in the comment section below. But I think that is a, a, a return to the way of doing their transfer business that we had prior to the bail money coming in. And it always worked well for us, didn't it? Even if you talk as far back as Frank Arneson, Damien Camoli coming in, and then um, obviously your man, your Italian man, Baldini. Uh, they, before Baldini came in, they were buying players knowing that they'd have a sell-on value. And I think trying to buy those ready-made players like we did with Paulinho and those other players, that didn't really work for us. So that, that kind of makes more sense, doesn't it? I've got a few other names here. I mean, we can go on to Berahino in a minute. There's been a lot of talk about Iosi Perez. He, you don't think he's on the shortlist? Uh, I don't think so. I think he'd be a good player for Tottenham. I think what they're really looking for is an out-and-out -out number nine because Harry Kane can actually play in that number yeah, ten. He can drop yeah. deep. You've got Deli Ali, you've got Dembele, Lamella, Eriksen, all those players who can do that mm. Iose Perez floaty role. Um, maybe next summer that will one they'll look at because he's a really good player. He's got English representatives too. Okay. But um, I think what they need now is a number nine, a powerful player who can come in if Kane's injured or even give him some competition. Yeah and who can score goals, and I, Ozo Perez isn't quite that profile not of quite, player. Not quite big yeah. enough. Uh, so we talk a bit about Berahino. You mentioned something I didn't know about. He moved agents, is that right? Because everyone knew he was with AD Ward when it all went down uh, back in August, but he's moved agents since then. Now, what's that all about? Yeah, he was with AD Ward, of course, famous for being Raheem Sterling's agent, um, and he moved to Stella Group, who happened to represent Gareth Bale. So uh, yeah. they've got a good relationship with Tottenham. Um, if he had moved in August, Stella would have had to split the agent's fee with AD Ward. As it is, in January, the fee all goes to Stella, so don't be surprised if they're pushing quite hard 
for Berahino, especially because he's not playing as much anymore. He's yeah. fallen out with the club. Don't be surprised if Stella pushed really hard for Berahino. Tottenham still like him, of course, but after everything that happened over the summer, especially with, between Daniel Levy and Jeremy Peace, yeah. the West Brom chairman, that's another one that they'll try and they could try and do it, but it's going to be very difficult because West Brom are tough to deal with, as we found out. It's interesting that one as well because I wouldn't call Berahino an out and out number nine either, but he can definitely play in any of those three behind the front man as well and it does seem to me like Pochettino loves his kind of utility players who can slot in at any of those positions. Yeah I'm not a huge fan of Berahino to be honest I think he's good but you hear a few things about him and I'm not yeah. not quite so sure is he an out and out goal scorer but like you said I think they like they want pace that's one yeah. of the big things they want if you look at the Tottenham team at the moment buying Son was massive because he's added a bit of a bit about that but at the start of the season when they were playing Man United and when Tottenham were drawing yeah, early in the Stoke, season, yeah. they were really short on pace. So that's why you want a Berahino or a Batshawi, someone like that. And like you said, Berahino can play all the way across the front and he can still play as a number nine if need be. OK, and then just one more name that you mentioned on that short list that you've heard from your insiders, which I like. Uh, Martinez at Athletic Bilbao uh, that we haven't really talked about a great deal. Uh, he's got talent. He's really good. Uh, the problem with him is... One, it's his breakthrough season. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the first year he's really done it, but he's mm -hmm. been massively hyped in Spain. I know a few Spanish journalists and they say he is going to be brilliant, but 20 million euro buyout clause and that's net, so it's after tax. So it's an awful lot of money for a guy who's only been doing it for three months or so. And a lot less than Martial went for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's only very, been doing it for a year. It's very true, and I think if he doesn't go in January, he'll sign a new contract with Athletic Bilbao, which will raise the buyout clause, and as we know, Athletic Bilbao never sell players for less than their release clause. They right. did it with whoever it was with Lorente, Javi Martinez, all those kind of players, and a Herrera. I was going to so say, yeah, if Herrera. Tottenham are going to do it, they have to do it in January. He fits the profile. He can play wide and up front too. He scored a couple of brilliant goals. 20 million euro, what's that, like 14, 13, 14 million quid? Is yeah, that right? after tax, so it's a bit It's a bit more before. Um, doesn't speak a lot of English, you'll need six months yeah. to settle, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Spanish players, uh, there aren't many Spanish players who've just come straight in and settled, are they? It'd take a while. Yeah, and the yeah, after the Soldado, after being burned on Soldado, maybe they won't go back to La Liga quite Bobby. so readily as well. Happy, I mean. happy to see Bobby score the winner against Real Madrid <laughs> yeah. last week. On the most one of the most Spurs-like days of all time, we lose home to Newcastle, Bobby Soldado goes and scores the winner at home to Real Madrid. Okay, so uh, they're the kind of the talk about the possible ins in January. We've got the short list, so we know what we're going for. It's very exciting news. Uh, check out part two. We're going to talk about the possible sales from Spurs this January, guys. Let us know what you thought of that chat in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at SpurredOnTV. Come on, you Spurs. Hi, guys. Barnaby for Spurred On. This is part two of Tottenham Transfer Talk with football journalist Greg Stobart. You still okay, Greg? I'm very okay. 